Good afternoon, Dunkirk and Fredonia listeners, and welcome back to News at Noon. News at Noon is brought to you by Fredonia Radio Systems on WCVF 88.9 and WDVL 89.5. I'm News Director Lee Pye here today with Sarah Lotus Poto, Scott Bassett, Joshua Rubikov, as well as Hunter Halterman and Sports Director Matt Volz. With this top of the hour update, we'll bring you the latest of SUNY Fredonia's campus news and events, sports, weather, music, as well as national and international international news. First up, let's go to the event bulletin for, for this week. The Native American Consortium at SUNY Fredonia is pleased to present the Create Project documentary film, quote, Tradition, Trauma, and Tenderness, end quote, at, re- at Rush Recital Hall in Mason Hall on Friday, March 1st. This film is open to the public. The hour and a half film will begin at 6.30 p.m. Valerie Wallenwender will be available for questions after the film. The Brown Bag Lecture Series will continue in its theme of Gradually Then Suddenly, Understanding Change on Wednesday, March 6, from noon to 1 p.m. in McEwen, McEwen Hall, Room 202. Dr. Dr. Uh, Angela McEwen McGowan Kirsch from the Communication Department and Susan Spangler from the English Department will be giving a talk entitled Suddenly Then Gradually, How Adopting How Adapting Suddenly to Online Teaching Has Gradually Changed Our Face-to-Face Teaching. End quote. Uh, you'll hear how you'll hear how this change has affected both our campus and the field of education as a whole. Light lunch will be provided, and the Fredonia community members are, and all Fredonia community members are welcome. Members of Fredonia Radio Systems are heading to New York City tomorrow for the National Intercollegiate Broadcasting Systems Conference. The conference is held every year to see what high school and college radio and TV stations are considered to be the best. The nominations are. Best Live Music Broadcast from Rock in the Commons by Brian Valencia. Most Creative Innovation and Innovative Show from Lover Call, Gay Culture at Fredonia uh, from the Lover Call crew. Best Comedy Program from Just the Facts from Hunter Halterman, Chloe Kowalik, and Alex Irwin. Best Sports Update from News at Noon, Sports Update, uh, Lee Pai and Matt Voltz. Best News Interview, Graduate School Fair Interview, Chloe Kowalik. Best Liner and Sweeper, the Veggie Tales Liner from Alex Irwin and Natalie Wilkes. The Best Station ID, Community ID from Hunter Halterman. Best Business Director for Radio is Dan Granados. And congratulations, congratulations to all the nominees and good luck with the conference. That's it for the information through the grapevine. Next up, we'll bring it to Scott for our latest campus news updates. This Friday, March 1st, Students of Fredonia, the student-ran activist group, are hosting a protest against the program cuts that have been a hot-button issue for some time. The protests ask people to meet outside of Fenton Hall at 2 p.m. and to bring an instrument, if they have one, that is easily portable. The Career Development Office is holding its Job and Internship Expo on Wednesday, March 6th from 1 to 4 p.m. The expo will have a wide variety of employers and other folk looking to give students of Fredonia many opportunities for their future. Starting on February 13th, In the Balance, an exhibition for student art, is being displayed in the, uh, in the rack. The art pieces will be there until February 28th. That's it for Campus News. Now let's send it back to Lee. Thanks, Scott. Next up, we have local news. Randall Rollison, a Jamestown man, has pled guilty to second-degree manslaughter for the December 2021 accident that killed Lexi Hugan of Jamestown and the aggravated vehicle homicide for December 2022 that killed Linda Kramer while Rollison was free on bail. Because of these two, both accidental, both murders, he has been convicted and is sentenced between 13 years and 40 years in prison. The 40 years is the maximum sentence, and he will be up for parole in 2037. He also has a firearm case, which he tried to sell in total of nine firearms, which disallowed him to be in possession of any of them. Uh, He was caught with a weapon, which also added a second-degree criminal possession of a weapon on his record, but the judge decided to drop the weapons charge if Rollison pled guilty in the two deaths that he caused. 
Chautauqua County Indus- Industrial Development Agency approved the necessary tax breaks for Silver Creek Apartments. It is supposed to demolish the former Silver Creek High School and construct a three-story, over 5,500-square-feet apartment uh, building for senior citizens. The project still needs state funds to become a reality. However, they expect, they expect to hear from the state in the spring as whether they will get grant funds or not. The Fredonia Opera House's Bach and Beyond uh, Music Festival will likely end after the 2024 season. Executive Director Rick Davis outlined the reasons why the event might be in its final run. He said that the festival has the lowest attendance in 26 years, which translates the lowest ticket sale revenue. If you are interested in going to the last show, the festival is set for June 10th through the 16th. That's it for your local news update. Now let's bring it to the sports guy, Matt Voltz. Thanks, Lee. Well, the women's lacrosse team started their season off with a thriller, taking down Alfred 10-9 in overtime last night. After the Blue Devils took a 6-2 lead, Alfred stormed back and held a one-goal lead in the final minutes before junior Emma Cockrell tied the game with a minute and 33 seconds left. Both teams played through two scoreless overtime periods before freshman Leah Kunish scored her fifth goal of the game to seal the win. The Blue Devils are back at home at 1 p.m. on Saturday to face Hilbert. And baseball is back this weekend as Fredonia travels to Waynesburg College in Pennsylvania for a doubleheader against Pitt Bradford. The first game of the doubleheader will get started at 1 p.m. After that, the team will head down to Myrtle Beach for their annual spring games, similar to Major League Baseball spring training. And they're looking to improve upon a 6-28 and mark from last season. Well, the Sabres lost their win streak last night, falling 3-2 to the Panthers in Florida. With Buffalo trailing 2-1 to one late, rookie Zach Benson was called for a tripping penalty. Coach Don Granato was furious as he felt a previous interference penalty should have been called on Florida that was not. And as a result, Granato was assessed a bench minor penalty. On the ensuing 5-on-3 power play for Florida, former Sabre Brandon Montour scored what would end up being the game winner. Buffalo dropped below 500 with the loss, and they currently sit 11 points out of a playoff spot at 27, 28, and 4. That's all for your sports update. Now let's send it to Sarah with the weather. Now here is your Northern Chautauqua weather update brought to you by Fredonia Radio Systems. Hey, y'all. From one... Up from 11 a.m. today to 1 a.m. tomorrow, we have a high wind watch warning, so be careful going outside and traveling. Besides that, today's weather is more complicated than calculus, since we get a high of 64, but we also get a rain and snow package. How exactly do we get snow and warm weather at the same time? I am more confused than I was in my AP Cal class last year. I loved my AP Cal teacher, but man, she really boggled my brain sometimes. However, I did get a 3 out of 5 on my final exam, so I can't complain that much. But I can complain about the freezing temperatures in the mid-20s later tonight with continuing snow. Tomorrow is a cooler cousin today, in a literal and figurative sense. It snows a bit in the morning, but it stops as we reach a cloudy 32 degrees. I like to think every family's got that one cool cousin. You know, the one you only get to see twice a year and they just have so much going on in their lives. I can't think of anyone any of my relatives that fits the description. So my ego assumes it's me. However, Thursday clearly proves its label since later in the evening, we get a moment of peace as it dips to 29 degrees with clear skies. That's it for your two-day weather. Keep listening. I'll be back with the rest of your weekend forecast. For now, let's take it to Lee for a local music update. Kiss me up against the wall of the shower Tell me that I'm pretty, but I need some flowers. Foxhead Records are hosting a show at the Creek House. The bands playing are Plymouth, Plymouth Knob, Chatterbox, and Selden Aloro. The show is March 2nd. Doors are at 8 p.m. Music is at 9 p.m. And DM and DM Foxhead Record Co. on Instagram for the address. 
That's all I have for music news this week. Let's bring it to Josh for national and international news. Monday marks a win for the LGBTQ plus community in Utah, as teachers are now free to display pride flags and other social, political, or religious imagery in their classrooms. The Utah State House of Representatives blocked a bill that would have banned teachers from using their authority to promote or degrade certain beliefs. The Utah House is made of a majority of Republicans, but the ultimate vote came out to 39 against 32 voting in favor to not pass the bill. The bill would have punished educators for affirming or refusing to affirm a student's identity or challenging a student's political or religious viewpoints, even if it is, in a re- if it is related to an educational practice. However, the fight for LGBTQ plus rights in Utah is far from over. Last month, Governor Spencer Cox signed a law that regulates the bathrooms that trans students can use at school, a law that could charge people with trespassing if a person uses a changing room or locker room that does not match their sex assigned at birth. Today, Charles Limmer of Long Island pleaded guilty to a charge of conspiracy to smuggle wildlife into the country. Limmer, age 75, was indicted in October after he made thousands of dollars illegally trafficking flying insects, many of which were endangered butterflies and moths, including birdwing butterflies, which are among the rarest and largest butterflies in the world. Federal prosecutors say that he worked with overseas collaborators to smuggle about a thousand of the birdwing butterflies, even after his import-export license was suspended in October of 2022. Charles Limmer pled guilty and has agreed to hand over his collection of thousands of insects, as well as pay a $30,215 penalty, and he is to face up to five years in prison when he is sentenced. Yesterday, the estate of disco legend Donna Summer filed a lawsuit against Yee, the rapper formerly known as Kanye West. The lawsuit alleges that he used instantly recognizable parts of her 1977 song, I Feel Love, in his new album without permission for the song, Good Don't Die, after the estate rejected their request to sample the hit song. The complaint states, quote, The summer estate not only considered the immense commercial value of the I Feel Love composition, but also the potential degradation to Summer's legacy. West is known as a controversial public figure whose conduct has led numerous brands and business partners to disassociate from him, end quote. The result of the lawsuit remains to be seen. That does it for today's national and international news. Now let's take it back to Sarah for your weekend weather forecast. We start Monday on Friday with a high of 52 and mostly cloudy. A little reminder that spring break is two weeks away from this day. If you're like me and need to buy some sort of transportation, I would suggest buying it now before prices get much more expensive. I just paid almost $90 a round trip and I didn't even get the times I wanted. Before we start hearing my wallet crying grief, at nighttime, temperatures drop to the upper 30s as we get more cloud cover. Ooh, and get excited for Saturday since it's in the upper 50s with some sunshine. Folks, spring cleaning might be closer than you think. This day falls on National Old Stuff Day, which is a day to declutter your space. It's so convenient for landing on the weekend, but also so terrible for being nice out. So clean your room fast enough so you can enjoy the outdoors. Later in the evening, we descended to the low 40s and partly cloudy. Spring is just around the corner as we wrap up the weather with Sunday. The sunshine warms us up to the low 60s. I'm looking forward to going outside more. The cold, cloudy days give such a negative energy that I'm sure you guys feel. I just feel so much happier when it's pleasant enough to wear t-shirts. At night, we shift into the upper 40s with increasing cloud cover. That's it for your five-day forecast. Let's take it back to Lee. That will wrap up for today's edition of News at Noon. Campus Noon is written by Scott Bassett. Local news for this broadcast is prepared by Lee Pye. Weather is presented by Sarah lotus Sports is presented by Matt Voltz. Music is prepared by Lee Pye. National and international news is prepared by Joshua Ribikov. And finally, board operations for this broadcast are performed by Hunter Halterman. Thanks for tuning in to News at Noon. Join us every Monday and Wednesday at 12 p.m. on WCVF 88.9 and WDVL 89.5. From all of us at Fredonia Radio Systems, have a wonderful and warm day.